one, Tarnation! Howdy folks, this is Apple Geek. It is Saturday, and you know what that means. More ponies! Yay! Alright, uh, sorry, but I just gotta take a few minutes here to talk about a couple things before I get started on this one. Um, so go ahead and skip ahead if you just want to watch my reaction. Um, just real quick, uh, a brief apology regarding my reaction to the last episode, Gauntlet of Fire. I tried something out, I put some video clips in the middle of my reaction that I thought would be funny. Um, apparently it didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. Basically, the, if, if you haven't seen it, go see it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, just to clarify, the, the clips were meant to symbolize the, the launching of the Phantom's new character ship of Spike and Ember in an escalating manner as the interactions uh, between Spike and Ember throughout the episode increased in terms of the, their growth of friendship. So that's all it was, it was meant to signify, and I, uh, again, I, I'm classifying this as a, maybe a, a somewhat cute idea, but horribly executed. So it just, it caused a lot of confusion. I got a lot of comments from people who were confused, and even some from people that were rather nasty about it. So, for various reasons. And those negative comments, that, that, that that's kind of one of the reasons why I just don't like getting into the whole shipping thing in general, because it's just such a controversial topic for so many reasons. I mean, there's just so many... Yeah, it's it's like Ford versus Chevy, you know, Apple versus Google, dog versus cat. It just it's just so much back and forth on stuff. I just want to say stay away from it. But Spike and Ember is one that uh, one of the few that I actually kind of like the idea of. So I thought I would try to have some fun with it, and just didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. So anyway, sorry about that. I'll try not to do anything as stupid as that in the future. So because I don't like you guys being confused and mad at me. So anyway. Uh, moving on from that, that's in the past. Today's episode, No Second Prances, Trixie is back! <laughs> um, I've not seen the promo clip, just the, the synopsis. The, the instant I saw the synopsis, when I first leaked, I'm like, oh yeah, that has to be Trixie. And it is actually perfect. Um, okay, just before I started recording this, okay, I, I went back and watched Magic Duel from, from Season 3. Because uh, I, I wanted to refresh my memory on how exactly things ended when we last saw Trixie. Uh, I, it, it, just, it basically reconfirmed what I already had in my head in that Trixie was never really reformed. You know, when I came into Season 6, I had no doubts that Starlight was reformed. It just, the, the, the possibility of her immediately going back evil was just not even the focus of my mind at all. Trixie, on the other hand, I figured if she ever came back, it was going to be, she's back to the same old shenanigans, most likely. Um, because it, Magic Duel just ended with her basically being like, oh, sorry, I let myself be consumed by an evil magic amulet and went out of control and whatever, here's some fireworks and, you know, bah, I'm, I'm out of here. And it was just, she still managed to insert her ego into her apology. So it was... <laughs> It wasn't like a truly heartfelt, repentant type apology like what happened with both Sunset Shimmer and the Starlight Glimmer. It just wasn't that. It, it, it was just kind of a sheepish, oops, sorry, you know, I went a little overboard this time, but whatever, I'm out of here. So, and, and Twilight and Friends basically didn't, you know, embrace her and bring her into the group or anything like that. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I figured she's going to go back to her old ways at least somewhat. Now all that said, um, uh, just switching back to Starlight for a second. Even though I didn't think Starlight would immediately go back evil, I still don't think she's gonna go pure evil again. Uh, I just don't see that happening. What I do see happening is, uh, or what I thought would happen at some point in the season, is that she would be faced with the temptation to go back to some of her old ways. And it would be a, a major character growth episode for her to have to deal with that, you know, be faced with her past demons and have to choose whether she's truly, you know, put that behind her and wants to move on, or if she's, you know, gonna be tempted to go back to some of those old ways. So, and Trixie is the perfect opportunity for that, because if Trixie is still up to, to her old tricks, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> sorry, and 
uh, and wants to like come along and try to get under Twilight's skin again over something, what better way to do that than to befriend Starlight Glimmer, who is somewhat you know can somewhat still manipulative at this point? I mean, she's easily influenced. I'm manip uh, manipulative. She's easily influenced at this point because she's still kind of unsure about who she is as a pony person at this point. So, um, yeah, I can I can definitely see this, uh, Twilight not liking the idea of Starlight having or being around Trixie for the simple fact that it's you know it's a temptation. So, I'm very curious to see how Starlight handles this. Hopefully, she comes out. Uh, in the end, the better for it, having learned a lesson, and hopefully she ends up teaching Trixie a lesson or two, too, you know? Uh, that, that would be great. I really hope they do something different with Trixie in this episode. I, I really do. I, we basically had two episodes of her doing mostly the exact same thing. The second one was pretty much the exact same thing, just her having a little bit more magic power at her disposal to actually be kind of mean. So, um... Yeah, I really hope they, they do something with her character to actually give her reasonable character growth and move on from the, the shenanigans or something. That, that That's just something I would like to see. Some people probably don't want to see Trixie ever go that way. Fine. Your opinion is your opinion. You're welcome to it. This is my opinion. So, Anyway, uh, enough yakking about that. I can't wait to see what those two, uh, what kind of mischief those two get into. So... Or even to see if I'm proven completely wrong on what's going to happen here. So, without further ado, let's get this going. No second princes. Starting now. Okay, we're setting up for a party. First lesson of the day. We very carefully set the table without oh, yeah, using magic. So that... Um, didn't she just say without using magic? Did you? How? When? What? <laughs> what? No magic. You were supposed to do it by hook so I could work in a friendship lesson. Yeah. Oh, I heard set the table and just kind of went for it. <laughs> well, Whoops. if you hadn't used magic, you'd have heard me say, uh, this plate represents your head, this spoon is your heart, and the knives are sharp. <laughs> oh, be careful with knives. <sighs> that works. The metaphors make more sense when you're actually setting the table. <laughs> Should I change it back? I just want to make sure you're ready for this dinner. Princess Celestia will be joining us tomorrow night to see how the friendship lessons are going. I was just going to say, who's the four? Princess Celestia, why are there four seats? Well, the whole point is for you to bring a new friend. That way the princess will see for herself just how far you've come. And how good a teacher you and have. And we all know who's going to be the fourth I one. I choose. I like all your friends. <laughs> That's the best part. You have to make a new friend. Ooh, dun-dun-dun. Hey, maybe I'll just force friendships by magically enslaving the entire population of Coneyville. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I love that she's comfortable enough to actually joke about it, though. That... That's progress even from the, the, the season premiere, I feel like. So, that's great. Well, yeah, obviously we know that Trixie's going to be the fourth, but... No, I, I I thought for a second that we were... Twilight was almost going to throw the, the whole Ticketmaster episode lesson on her, where, you know, like, Twilight was forced to choose just one other friend to go to the gala with. I thought this was going to be the same thing, but nope. Make a new friend! Let's see. Make new friends in Ponyville, the friendliest the star, place COVID, in Equestria. Or Shouldn't be hard. Need to make a new friend, huh? I know just the pony for you! Uh-oh. <laughs> Miss Starlight Glimmer, meet Mrs. Cake. <laughs> How are you, dearie? <laughs> are you baking? Can I help? Uh, getting a little ahead of yourself here, aren't you? Oh, wait, wait, what, what? What would your new friend meet? Wow, even baked. <laughs> I like the sound of it. Pauza, wowza! Are you trying to put me out of business with your fancy magic opinion? What's a cake? Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> We're gonna see this a lot in this episode, aren't we? We're gonna see a lot of her being super overpowered with magic in this episode. 
Starlight, meet Big Mac. Yup. Yup. He's not much of a talker. No kidding. Oh, that's too bad. I love a good conversation. And, wh what? Yeah, yeah, you did something! Whoa! What's happening? I feel really weird. I'm talking so much, and I'm so articulate, enunciating with such precise pronunciation. What? 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 Annie Apple awoke and accidentally ate an Auburn Azalea. <laughs> Make it stop! You can't be friends with some pony who doesn't talk. And I guess my first instinct shouldn't be to magically <laughs> to act the way I want them to. Mm. All right, I'll change it back. <laughs> Thank you, Apple. <laughs> Finding a new friend is to render you great. Impressions count a great deal, you know. Wow. I'm glad you all got past my first impression. I gotta talk about that later. Every pony deserves a second chance. <gasps> now I have a top-notch idea. I'm thinking pastel silk here and here with crinoline underneath. You really think a new outfit will help me meet ponies? Oh, with the right outfit, you can do anything, darling. That was fast. When will it be ready? Three weeks. <laughs> uh, tomorrow. Whoops. Well then, how about a hat from the <clears throat> clearance bin? <laughs> Oh man. No pony's gonna make friends with you because of your outfit. The only thing you want a new friend draped in is coolness. Like Naturally. You? Yeah, but you already know me, so. <gasps> Big fire! But, but, oh! I'm sorry. Who's that? <gasps> only the Wonderboltiest pony in the Wonderbolts. I figured it had to be one of the Wonderbolts. Wow. You Kind of sonic what? boom without the I guess rain the boom. First question would be, what's a wonderbolt? Enslaving villages, I guess. And the faces continue. <laughs> You're adorable, but probably not what Twilight had in mind. <laughs> she actually charmed Angel. Wow. We're Fluttershy. Oh, hey, Rose. I haven't seen you in a while. Here, there's got to be something wrong with me. <sighs> okay, calm down. Nobody makes friends with a total stress case. <laughs> oh, hey, Larry and Bonbon. Stop stressing. Stop stressing. Uh, smooth. Very smooth. Who's gonna be? Bulk biceps, really? Well, he still works at the spa. That's awesome. Oh, this is just what I needed. <sighs> Tell me about it. You ever have one of those days? For me. There, there she is. Those days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start coming here every time I visit Ponyville. I'm not from here either. I've been trying to make friends, but it's not easy. They're not saying it, but I think every pony knows about my past. I may have been a tiny bit. Completely and utterly evil. <laughs> Ponies judge me on my past, too. They are two peas in a pod. A pony I can relate to. Soup spoon, salad fork. I said, it's spoon, too perfect. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that after friendship, the greatest magic of all is proper silverware placement. <laughs> Twilight, guess what? Really? I made a new friend. Nerd alert, Twilight. News. <laughs> She's great. Great. She's powerful. Of course. Uh oh. She's, hello. <laughs> and she's got the same outfit. Trixie? Yep. You know each other? You could say that. We've had our differences. Yeah. What matters is Twilight gave me a second chance, and I appreciate it. What? What was with that grin? So, um. What brings you to Ponyville? The yes, great to tell. and powerful Trixie has come to perform a new stage show of grand illusion. So she's doing the same old magic act, okay. And 
penitent Trixie's equestrian apology tour. That's kind of a mouthful. <coughs> it's a working title. Okay. Starlight? A moment. Over here. I love how Trixie is, like, egotistical and trying to be humble at the same time. Well, with Trixie's past and your past, I'm not so sure she's the best first friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but whatever she did, you've forgiven her, right? Of course. S it's just... Yeah, she wasn't but... the nicest pony. Well, you did say any pony, and I just assumed that you'd trust me to make my own friends the way Princess Celestia trusted you. Ooh. You're right. I trust you. Ouch. Just be back in time for the dinner. <gasps> Thanks, Twilight. You won't regret it. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I see where this is going. Says they'll give you a second chance, but deep down, they never forget. And that's what I'm worried about. <sighs> what is it? I heard what Twilight said about me, and she's right. I wasn't very nice. So I'd understand if you didn't want to be friends. Okay. Are you kidding? You're the first. Starting to get a little different feel on Trixie now. Yeah, how I feel. Can you keep a secret? What are friends for? Uh oh. The things I've done, I did them because I was jealous of Twilight. She's just the best at everything, and I wanted to beat her at something. Your secret's hmm. safe with me. Thanks. Want to help me unpack my wagon? I spend a hmm. lot of time on the road with my wagon, so it might be a. We'll see where this goes, but I'm actually starting to like Trixie a little bit now. I'm pretty good at organizing stuff, magic props, brainwashed crowds. <laughs> Is that Pinky? Oh, Twilight. Why did I think it was Pinky? Uh, I'll catch up. I think there's something in my hoof. Sure, the wagon's right around the corner. So, how's it going with your new friend? Great. Thanks for asking in a completely not creepy way. Twilight, because stop you know, micromanaging. It's working out for any reason. I can introduce you to my friend here. Nice uh, to meet you. Bush. Oh no, you can come out now. You like music, right? DJ Pwn yes! would be the perfect friend for tonight's incredibly important dinner with Celestia. They just used her name. You know, if you decide to make a last minute change. <laughs> so back at your castle. Oh man. Said, I, trust you, <laughs> I already hear the fandom going nuts. I don't trust you. Who can really say? Who said what? I know I can't. Can you? <laughs> Starlight. I'm just trying to look out for you. I appreciate it, but you're wrong about Trixie. She's just like me. We have a real connection. That's kind of what I'm afraid of. Oh, what about her? Derpy! Yes! Please, Twilight. I know you're trying to help, but I need to make oh, friends the on my own. Oh, the cameos are... I'm going to become a better pony. What have we seen? I haven't seen Doctor Who's yet. Do you think Trixie's the one to help you with that? Wow. Trixie was right. You're not really giving her a second chance. I Ooh. wonder what that says about how you feel about me. Ooh. Oh, now he'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> They're pulling out all the stops in this one. You said Twilight is better than you at everything, but that's not true. You're better at magic. Only when I'm wearing a soul-sucking evil amulet. <laughs> I don't think that counts. Funny story. Don't need to get into it. I meant stage magic. Well, of course. Great. Yes. Powerful. Hmm. Obviously. But I'm not the best. As great and powerful as I am, there's one trick I've never been able to do. The Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive. The what now? Only one magician has ever pulled it off. My hero, Houdini. We're you getting backstory. You yourself into the open mouth of a hungry manticore. 
After the manticore chews you up and swallows you, you magically step out of a box on the other side of the stage. Nice! Completely unharmed! That sounds very... Dangerous! I was gonna say cool! I knew I liked you for a reason. Starlet's gonna be the one ending up teaching I tried it, Twilight a lesson here, isn't she? Swallowed by that manticore. Not if you could use real magic. Uh -oh. Obviously, way to rub it in. Ow. No, I mean I could help. You could start the trick, and right before you got chewed up, I could use magic to save you and make you appear in the black box. I guess that would work. But if you made one mistake, I'd be a goner. <laughs> When it comes to magic, I don't make mistakes. Maybe I could be your magic show helper pony. We call it assistant in the magician biz. And no ponies ever offered to help before. Mm. Well, I'd be honored. You may have just made my great and powerful magic show even better, which I didn't think was possible. <laughs> We're gonna blow them away tonight. <laughs> I can't. Tonight's wow, this nice poster, actually. important dinner with Twilight. Oh. Yeah. Can I vent for a minute? What are friends for? Oh, boy. Even after Twilight says she trusts me, she clearly doesn't trust me enough to choose my own friends. Oh, oh yes, boy. You were right. No second chances. Huh. <sighs> I wish I could say I was surprised. Well, lucky for Princess Twilight, I have my magic show tonight. <laughs> the way she if says that. If you have to go to the dinner, I completely understand. I just hope I find a way to survive the moonshot manticore mouth dive without my new assistant. Oh, we really doing that, Trixie? And we actually do see Celestia. Starlight Glimmer should be here. It's <laughs> totally any bored. Minute, any minute now. <laughs> and now she looks annoyed. How about I introduce everyone? Our friendship lessons are going so well. She made three new friends. <laughs> she has such great taste in friends. I don't know where she would have learned that. <laughs> Starlight <laughs> Glimmer. I thought you said nose hair trimmers. What's going on? I'm hungry. And my nose is too hairy. Really? Ha <laughs> ha! Cranky Doodle! You're so funny! If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna check the kitchen. Maybe she got lost amongst the, uh, artichokes! <laughs> Starlight? Has anyone seen Starlight Glimmer? So I just noticed the banners in the background. That was interesting. Uh -huh. Trixie. Of course. So this is the humble and penitent Trixie's equestrian apology tour? <laughs> Ain't that a mouthful of molasses? <laughs> it's a working title. <laughs> this is gonna be the greatest night of my life. Excuse me, our lives. Oh, I'm so glad we're not at that boring dinner. Ahem. Uh oh. You just decided to skip our dinner without telling me? Are you aware that at this very moment, Princess Celestia is waiting for you at a table? With exquisite silverware placement? Yes, but this get is with this, exactly Get off the silverware, Twilight. Friends with Trixie. Ah, uh, you still don't trust me. But guess what, Princess? It doesn't matter if you want to give me a second chance or not. Starlight had to choose between you and me. And she chose me. Your pupil chose me. So mm. I win. You win? That sounds like you just made friends with me to beat Twilight. Exactly. And there's the other shoe. Wait. Uh -oh. I mean, no. I got caught up in the moment. I like you. Beating Twilight is just a bonus. <gasps> oh, saying that didn't help, did it? <laughs> Nope. I should have known. No pony else in Ponyville wanted to be my friend. Why would you? Uh, wait! It's not like that! I am your friend. Oh. Well, you won. I hope you're happy. <sighs> There's like the fault on all three sides here, Trixie I think. Back to a solo show. Trixie? 
Which is exactly the way she likes it. Thank you, Princess Twilight, for getting rid of that annoying pony who wanted to be my first friend. I am not sad at all. I definitely don't feel like my heart is breaking into a million pieces. Oh, boy. Yeah, you should feel bad, Twilight. Come one, come all. Come and see the pathetic and friendless Trixie's way to go. Oh. Dum -dum. You really Ouch. messed it up this time. Repentance tour. <laughs> nice entrance. Title. Behold, your fears come true. A pony eating manticore. <sighs> okay, she actually found the manticore. <laughs> For tonight, the great and powerful Trixie shy. will be performing the moonshot manticore. Why did you say manticore you'd be from back in season one? Now, now, save your gasps for when I defy the beast's jaws of doom and appear inside that black box. I was supposed to perform this trick with my great and powerful assistant, who was also my great and, and powerful Twilight's gonna help. Friend. Starlight, or... when I first came to Ponyville, Princess Celestia gave me room to make my own decisions and my own friends. I need to give you the same freedom. I shouldn't have tried to pick and choose there your friends. There you go. <laughs> Just like me, you have to nice make your own decisions. Nice helmet. That's going to be artwork. Own friends. But what if Trixie really was using me just to one-up you? From what I've seen, she's the real thing. But it's not my place to judge. It's all up to you. <laughs> Come on, Starlight. You got this. Starlight, if you're out there and you still want to be friends... Let's be great and powerful together. Please. Going. Never have pulled off a trick like that. Aw, snap. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, princess. Wow. Aw, is that the end? Oh, wait. What's it? <laughs> How do you get your hair to do that all? <laughs> <sighs> I had seen that, I had thought of that scene going a different direction, but that's equally funny. <laughs> oh, I love these outro themes. <laughs> Trixie now. It's done. <laughs> the writers made it a Nick Conflon. You made a Trixie fan out of me. All right. Be right back with uh, my commentary on this. Probably going to be a long one because this was quite an episode. Be right back. Okay. Just first thing I want to say, I was largely wrong about how I thought what this episode would go, what the stuff I was talking about before the episode started. Uh, Trixie is actually a lot further along the whole redemption path than I kind of thought she would be, which is interesting. And also, uh, things with Starlight went a little different than, than I thought they would. So, I will, will expand on that in just a minute here. Um, j j just 
I guess I'm going to start with, uh, with with Starlight since that's where the episode started. Um, I love the fact that we're getting to see her use magic to do crazy things because with all that magical power, it, it would just be kind of boring if we didn't see her doing some crazy things with it from time to time. So that was fun. Um, and, and I loved, in that opening scene, I loved the fact that she actually poked fun at the whole thing about her, you know, enslaving an entire village and, and whatever. I mean, she was so jittery and unsure of herself back in the premiere. This already shows character growth for her because she's now comfortable enough about it that she can kind of, you know, joke about it and, and such. So that, that was just great to see. Yeah, the, the baking a cake in like three seconds flat, that was interesting. Um, but uh, on... Just to say quick, the thing with Rarity was interesting, she wasn't using, or Starlet wasn't using her magic there, but it's just interesting to me, the, the thing about Rarity needing three weeks to crank out a dress. You know, in the past, Rarity would drop everything to, you know, quickly make dresses for her, you know, her sister and her friends and, and whatever. And so either she doesn't consider Starlight a good enough friend to just drop everything and do that, or she's actually gotten busy to the point where she can't just drop everything like that. Given the fact she's got two boutiques and another one about to open, she probably is that busy. So just kind of an in interesting little reference there, side reference to what's going on in, in Rarity's life. So I just thought that was interesting. Big Mac talking thing. That was one of the most epic parts of this episode. Um, just, just really, I'm scared of how that's going to be taken because I've seen comments different places, uh, not necessarily in the fan, I'm just reviews on, on merchandise and things, where there are people out there that believe Big Mac to be mentally handicapped, and that's why he doesn't hardly ever talk. That's not true at all. He is not mentally handicapped. He's just a big, quiet guy that doesn't feel the need to speak a whole lot about things or you know use a lot of words to express his thoughts and feelings. He's just not that type of, of, of an individual. And when he does, uh, decide to speak up and talk like he did in Brotherhood Social, oh my word, you better darn well listen because he's got something really important to say. You know, I I don't want him to be a chatterbox. I want him to choose his words carefully and have it be meaningful. That's, you know, it just shows his depth and it's it's his charm as a character. Um, so, you know, that said, I, I wasn't so much surprised by the fact that that spell, you know, made him start talking because I knew he could talk. But it was more of the fact that he was compelled to just start rambling like a chatterbox. And the part where I really lost it was just the whole, you know, and now I'm art you know, articulating quite properly and just doing this talking fancy thing. <laughs> I just, and this was like, make it stop! Oh man, I... I didn't catch it the first time, but on the second watch, I saw that glare from AJ after he, after he ran off. I'm like, oh man, if looks could kill, Starlight would have been smoldering remains at that point. <laughs> oh, like I said, I, I thought that Starlight was going to do something crazy with trying to help, you know, on Apple Harvest and then just, you know, mess things up or something. I did not see it going to the Big Mac talking thing, but I love that. Um, uh, anyway, um... Uh, but no, really, Starlight. The interesting thing, yeah, Twilight was forcing her to make, you know, trying to force her to make a new friend, which, which is great. I mean, she needs to learn to make friends on her own, not just have them kind of dumped in her lap, so to speak, like it happened with the main six. I mean, when Twilight came to town, she had to, you know, make friends with all of the other the main six characters as well. So that was that was a, a great thing for for Starlight to learn, but. Starlight actually ended up being more the teacher than the student in in this one, both in terms of uh, what she did with with Trixie and and what she did with uh, with Twilight. Um, and I'll I'll talk more on that uh, on that in a bit here. Um, as far as Trixie goes, I was on the fence most of this episode, where she I couldn't figure out if she was truly sorry or if she was. Um, you know, wanting to make things right, or if she was still trying to work an angle somehow. And it, it just flip flopped back and forth. Like, I saw things that made me think that, you know, hey, their her budding friendship with Starlight is truly genuine. And then I saw things that made me question, well, is she actually doing that, or is that just part of her act? I, I really couldn't figure it out. I mean, it was kind of like w with, with Discord, 
uh, when when he was going all uh, you know dark side back in the season four finale, is for most episodes I can't, I can't think of, is he really going that or going back evil or is it just a, a, a part of the act? He's going to double cross or something? I, I just you know I, I couldn't figure it out. But there are certain things that that had me leaning towards he's on the up and up. And the, the thing that, that really won it for me is when uh, she was in, you know, behind the curtains with uh, with Starlight and Twilight there, and just kind of revealing what she was, you know, doing. She was trying to get back at Twilight again, and then realized she had just kind of slipped and jeopardized her newfound friendship with, uh, with Starlight in, in the process. And then, you know, the tears started flowing and whatever. At that point, I realized, okay, She's not intentionally trying to work an angle. She is truly sorry for what she's done in the past and wants to make things right, but it's been really hard for her to let go of, of old old habits and her old you know jealousy of, of Twilight. And she kind of subconsciously ended up using her friendship with Starlight as as a Starlight being Twilight student to try and get back at Twilight somehow to be better than her on something. And then, you know, she realized a little bit almost too late that it was uh, the, the, that she screwed up by, by doing that. That wasn't really what she wanted. She realized what she wanted was to make amends and make a friend and it, it just her old tendencies got kind of got in the way because snuck up on her there. So, you know, that, that was kind of actually the things I, I thought I would see happening to Starlight in this, but it actually ended up happening to Trixie instead. So that was a twist. Um, but you know, hats off to Starlight for for befriending her. I mean, the the two really are are two peas in a pod. You know, they got su such similar past, and it, it just you know it, it was the makings for a great friendship. So so those two really were perfect for each other. One thing that that hit me though, uh, and there's another thing that had me siding more towards with Trixie was actually you know really feeling bad. When she's setting up her her show platform and such, you know, all the the town's ponies were just kind of muttering and whispering and glaring at her and whatever, and you could see she just, you know, took it really hard, and it felt felt really bad for her at that point, and, and, and it hit me. Trixie's misdeeds are known around town. Starlight's aren't. Outside of the main six and you know the princesses and uh, well, uh, Sunburst now. I mean, no, really nobody in Ponyville is aware of the, the whole time travel destroying of the future thing that she was doing. So, I mean, she said in the premiere she was afraid that every, every pony would find out and she wouldn't be able to make any friends as a result. So, Starlight's actually got a little bit of an advantage over Trixie in that fashion, but it was, it was great to kind of see her, you know, see that happening with Trixie and come to Trixie's defense or, you know, come, come to support her as, as a result. So, so that was really great. Um, and, and yeah, it. it oh, we got backstory with Trixie too. The 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 whole thing with with Hoofdini, and you know, looking up to him, wanting to replicate his tricks and whatever. It suddenly dawned on me. In the past, uh, you know, I have not cared for Trixie. I thought she was rather annoying and not a whole lot of redemptive qualities and whatever. I said even her apology at the end of Magic Duel had some egotistical banter in there. And her whole, you know, traveling magic show act. I always thought it was just an extension of her ego, but she's still doing it, but now more for the right reasons, and it occurred to me, wait a minute, this is a legitimate thing. This is, you know, she's in the entertainment industry. She's going around and putting on a show, and she's good at it. Like, that's basically her talent. She's good at putting on a fancy show for, for ponies to watch and enjoy, and as long as she's not just, like, allowing her ego to trump it up to something grander than what it actually is, you know, it could be really fun and entertaining. So it now occurs to me this is actually a legitimate career thing for her. So I was I was kind of hoping to see like her leave that behind, but actually I'm now glad to see that she's still doing it and just now for the right reasons. So I I just love that part. I do have to wonder though, when she was shooting herself out of the cannon into the Mandacore, I'm like, uh, did she actually have almost a death wish at that point? Because she had no idea whether Twilight or Starlight would be there to save her from the belly of the manticore. I mean, that was actually kind of a rather dark moment in this in this episode, if to be perfectly honest. But well and I actually thought that 
maybe Twilight would be the one to end up saving her, but no, it was it was Starlight. After Twilight gave her a little pep talk and, you know, repaired their friendship, so to speak. So, um, you know, that, that's actually the thing. It, it, there, there's faults, I mentioned in the episode, there's faults on all three sides here. Uh, you know, Trixie's fault, I already talked about, was the fact that she's, you know, allowed herself to kind of fall back on her old, you know, jealousy thing with Twilight. She hadn't really buried the hat, hatchet and, and moved on. And, uh, you know, Starlight, uh, Starlight just failed because, I'm sorry if I mentioned this already, she, Starlight, it bugged me because she didn't talk to Twilight about wanting to help Trixie and just blew off the, the important dinner with Princess Celestia. That wasn't really a proper thing to do. She should have respected Twilight enough to talk to her about it rather than just not show up. Um, that was more of a minor thing. Uh, Twilight, her problem is that she did not trust, she wanted, Twilight was supposedly giving both Starlight and Trixie second chances. But she didn't fully trust either of them. I, I shouldn't say fully trust, because, I mean, you, you have to have some reservations, but she really was not giving them near the trust that she should have. And she was rather harsh on Starlight about it, too. And I mean, I, I can understand that. She doesn't want Trixie to be a bad influence and drag Starlight back down. I get that. But I'm thinking back to when Celestia um, decided to have the main six unseal Discord and try to reform him. She put an incredible amount of trust and faith in the main six, especially Fluttershy, and also in Discord himself, in that, you know, she truly believed that he could be reformed and that he wouldn't immediately run rampant the instant he was unsealed. So, uh, you know, Twilight kind of had, as a mentor, kind of had to learn that lesson of that she needed to just take a step back, trust that her student would make the right choices, and, and you know, trust that, that Trixie, you know, to, it, if she had truly forgiven Trixie, she should have, you know, allowed her a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, at least, about, about some of these things. But she just allowed herself to be too clouded um, by her, you know, past emotions of things with Trixie and did the whole micromanaging thing, even spying on Starlight. That just kind of irked me a little bit. But anyway, um, all in all, great character growth for all three of those, uh, Twilight, Starlight, and Trixie. And just, yeah, I, I'm very happy with the way this this episode ultimately went. It, I, I I wanted to see something change with Trixie, and we definitely got it, and got it a whole lot quicker than I than I thought we would even. Um, so I I'm definitely uh, I love Trixie as a character now. I, I think she has has grown well from from where she had come from. So I feel like that chapter is finally kind of closed now. I don't know if we'll see Trixie again in the future or not. Uh, maybe not after this one, but I'm glad they brought her back to finish this because it was it was great for with Starlight and it was great for Trixie herself. So, um, yeah, I, I love that. Just uh, other brief thoughts about the episode. I got to see all the main six again. The thing with Rainbow was hilarious. You saw my notes in there. Uh, <laughs> it's like you did not just say that in front of Rainbow Dash. That that was awesome. And the face. Oh my word, that face is gonna be all over the memes. <laughs> Um, and the background ponies are everywhere. Final Scratch. I went back and watched the Slice of Life episode, because I couldn't remember for sure, but their names, Octavia, Vinyl Scratch, DJ Pwn3, none of those names were mentioned in there. So I didn't, I didn't even see Octavia in this one, unless I missed her somewhere. I also didn't see Dr. Hooves, just about everybody else is in here. Crank is even back with speaking lines, which is great, but I wish Derby would have had a line. <laughs> But no, Vinyl, um, and I, I don't even care that Vinyl didn't have lines. We know she doesn't talk, that's fine. We have never heard, to my knowledge, her, her name is either, either DJ Pwn3 or Vinyl Scratch used in the show before. And Twilight said both DJ Pwn3 and Vinyl in that scene in the show. So that has now been canonized in the actual show, not just in printed material. So that was great. And we have a canon pronunciation of DJ Pwn3, not DJ Pony. So... Whether you love it or hate it, there it is. So, anyway. I prefer Vinyl Scratch over the stage name anyway, but. So that was fun. But, oh okay, yeah, the, then the, I just gotta say quick, the icing on the cake was, yeah, Celestia and that dinner party at the end. I, <laughs> well, both the scene with her earlier, she first had this annoyed, the bored look on her face, then an annoyed look. And then the scene at the end with, with Cranky. <laughs> it's like, how do you get your mane to, 
to do that, you know, how do you get your hair to flow like that? Is <laughs> actually poking, the show poking fun at itself, and then Celestia just lets out this thoroughly disgusted sigh. I just... We were, we've been begging for slice of life stuff for Celestia, and we are getting it, and it is awesome. <laughs> Uh, but but even uh, even funny though, I, I thought the way that scene might have gone was that you know especially with the vinyl there doing the DJ thing I, I thought maybe we would have seen uh, like a crazy party going on with uh, with derpy vinyl and cranky and Celestia and maybe they would have brought some others in too had Octavia in there or something um, you know whatever I, I thought that'd be a big party but it was kind of equally funny just seeing that you know bored scene and have those little gags going on there so that was great. All right, I got to wrap this up because I've been talking forever here, but uh, thanks again for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed this, uh, this reaction. I know I freaked out several times in this one, but, you know, it's all in good fun, so I hope you enjoy laughing at this with me. So, um, as always, hit me up with the comments, and we'll catch you again next week for another episode. Later!